Oh, mountains of Mecca, what can you say of the day that Abraham passed your way? And he was instructed by God to build a house of peace where people will pray. And they will come on every lean, camel and out of every ravine, for the purpose of praising Allah. To glorify Allah. Assalamu wa barakatuh. Welcome to Hajj Insights. I'm your host, Ridwan Shamim. And this is a series where we learn about the great pillar of Hajj. Alhamdulillah, we have the opportunity with our Sheikh Muhammad Salah to talk about Hajj and what it entails. In our last episode, we spoke about who should be actually going Hajj. And what does Hajj mean? And we touched upon Ihram. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Sheikh. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah and thank you for asking. As I explained to the viewers, we touched about why it's important to do Hajj and who should be going Hajj. We want to talk slightly more about the Ihram and the Miqat. You mentioned some points about the Miqat. I have a few questions just before we start. Sure. You said that while someone is going into to, to, to make their Hajj or Umrah, they must pass a point called a miqat and make an intention at that point. Correct. Imagine if someone passes that point and they forget to make that intention. What, what, would, what would they have to do? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wal-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen, wala udwana illa ala al-zalimeen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidi al-awwaleen wa al-akhireen sayyidina Muhammad, uh, Al-Ihram is the first pillar of either Umrah or Hajj. It's a okay. pillar. Yeah. You cannot just indulge into the act of Umrah or Hajj without uh, making Ihram or assuming the intention of uh, entering into Ihram. And announcing the Ihram at the appointed places, the proper appointed areas or the Mawaqeet is a must. Okay. But if somebody passed the miqat, the appointed place, without assuming the intention of ihram, without saying the talbiyah, whether that was done deliberately for a reason or another, or out of forgetfulness, or he fell asleep in the plane or the any means of which, transportation, which can happen, yeah. or even furthermore, out of ignorance. Okay. And this is a very common problem. So, so he when the people know. at Jeddah airport, they say, well, what shall we make ihram? We didn't know. So in this case we say, to rectify that, okay. there are one of two choices. The first choice is that you must go back to the miqat, to the appointed place. What about if you're flying? It's impossible. Yeah. And nowadays it's not that uh, free, you can tour around in the country. Once you enter for, with the intention of performing hajj, you only have certain territories, which is Jeddah, Mecca, and Medina. You cannot mm. just wander around. Yeah. So that will take us to the next option automatically, which is, to rectify that, you assume the intention of ihram from whichever place you were informed, yeah. and you learn that you skipped the miqat, and now you must slaughter a fidya, a sheep. Okay. A sheep to be slaughtered and distributed, its meat must be distributed entirely on the poor people of uh, Mecca. It's different than the hadi and uh, uh, udhiya, because in the other two cases, we get to eat from it. Okay. But in the case of the fidya, this is a ransom. To rectify a violation, a wajib that you skipped. So in this case, you must uh, do so. And that's why I say, please, educate yourselves and study very well. And it doesn't uh, cost you nor take you much to learn about uh, the procedures and the rituals of hajj beforehand. Okay. Uh, I believe it is very important for us to study what's restricted during the state of ihram. Okay. You said, ihram is similar to takbirat al-ihram in the prayer. There are certain acts which will become prohibited, mm -hmm. restricted. And in case that any person violated that, there is a fidya, okay. or an expiation for that, uh, as we'll explain right now. First of all, if a couple are performing hajj together, or umrah, in a state of ihram, and once you said, labbayka umratan, or labbayka hajjan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-Hajj ashurun ma'lumat. 
فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج so he prohibited completely a rafath which is a sexual talk mm-hmm. or sexual relations an intimate relation between the couple or what leads to that okay so you completely avoid having any uh, intimate relationship with your spouse during the state of uh, ihram there are some restrictions which are uh, only pertaining men so there's a difference between men and slight women slight difference okay such as in the case of uh, men that they're not allowed to wear any stitched clothes okay you're not allowed to wear what you're wearing right now, or yeah. what I'm wearing. No shawal qamis, no tob, or abaa, or, or a suit and tie. So what do we wear? We wear izar and rida. And izar is the lower towel, okay. wrap it around the waist. Somebody will say, but it is stitched, at least the edges. the edges. I understand, but we're talking about the clothes which were made to be worn in a special form or shape, like a shirt, or pants, or a jacket, or a okay. coat. No, we're talking about here uh, non-stitched clothes because this is very uh, pure, uh, very simple form okay. of covering the aura. Similar very much to the coffin and similar very much to the towels that they receive the baby once he or she is born. Go on. And because that resembles our beginning and it resembles our end. our end. Free from any beautification, from any jewelry, from any fancy or luxurious means yeah. in, in, in a very simple form and shape. And the other piece is called rida, because you wear it over your shoulders to cover both shoulders. Okay. It's quite interesting that you see people once they wear the rida right away, they uncover the right shoulder and they yeah. stay in this condition 24-7. What is this for? Because this is what they have seen on the videos. Yes. They think this is hajj. No. Uncovering the right shoulder is a prophetic tradition only in the very first tawaf, which okay. is known as tawaf al qudum or tawaf al umrah. So after the arrival tawaf, and after you finish the tawaf, you must cover both shoulders. Okay. What we see that uh, our brothers are constantly wearing in this condition, which is called ittiba' and covering the right shoulder, it's a, it's a mistake, so especially in the prayer. So this is very specific to a specific action. Exactly, and it has a reason. Okay. Similar to another act, which we'll discuss it during the traditions of tawaf as well. Yeah. Another uh, restriction, which covers both men and women, Yes. Uh, wearing or touching or using any said, uh, scented substances or wearing perfumes or clones or any okay. uh, oil that have fragrance that's completely restricted. While we said prior to assuming the intention of haram among the preparations before taking ghusl, etc., clipping the nails, removing the hair, the underarm hair, and uh, shaving the pubic area, that it is recommended for both men and women to wear the cologne or the perfume okay. against their bodies, not against the ihram clothes. So not actually putting it on the, on the ihram? Not on, on the, the ihram. Okay. If you ever put it on the ihram, you must wash it off or ch- okay. uh, change it to another ihram. On the body, on the forehead for instance. But nowadays because of the crowd, women are not allowed to wear the perfume okay. because it is prohibited anyway during any other time for a woman to wear any fragrance or perfume that will attract men or people who are walking by to look at her. Okay. Even if she's going for the prayer. The Prophet ﷺ says if she does so she must return home to wash herself off from the perfume then if she wants to resume and go back to prayer. So just so to is, clarify that point, sorry she had to stop you, just to clarify that point, the women are asked not to do that now. Correct. Okay, so the men are... But, but this sunnah was general for men and women. Okay. Because in the past, women would perform tawaf at night. At night time, okay. Okay? But now it is very crowded, and we see that men and women are competing yes. even over the black stone. Yes. So it is very uh, hard to avoid smelling the fragrance or the perfume mm-hmm. of a woman. You should avoid it completely. Okay. But if a woman is performing aura, uh, performing umrah yes. in a peak time, such as right after Ramadan where everybody departed, or a month after Hajj, yeah. uh, look at people get to perform Umrah, and you see just uh, uh, very few people very perform few. an Umrah. So you may do that if you wish, because it would not attract that many men. Okay. Okay. Another restriction, which is hunting. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, 
أحل لكم صيد البحر وطعامه متاعا لكم وللسيارة وحرم عليكم صيد البر ما دمتم حرما سورة المائدة It has been permitted for you to uh, eat and consume the, the, the fish which you catch from the sea. Okay. But in the state of ihram, hunting is prohibited. Okay. Okay? Nor can you even eat from the animal which you hunted. Right. Uh, another restriction which is very interesting one. Processing or being a part of a marriage contract. Yeah, that is interesting. During the state of ihram. And when we say these restrictions, some people think, uh, they, they panic. They think it's very hard and I'm afraid like they're walking on, uh, on the edge. Yes. It's very simple because the ihram, if you arrive from uh, your journey to Mecca, the umrah uh, maximum would take two to three hours. Yes. So it is not a big deal. You're not going to be in a state of ihram forever. It's easy to avoid these restrictions. Now we speak about women. How do they dress up in ihram? Women in ihram, number one, completely avoid wearing any makeup. Okay. Hinna is permissible. Yes. But other makeup and uh, eye uh, liners and eyelashes and lipstick and all of that. And this is completely dangerous, especially in the state of uh, ihram. That can jeopardize your hajj okay. and can ruin it. How about so the clothes? sisters, the, the, the sisters who come from uh, particular cultures are not aware of that. Everybody who passes by any of them should inform them. Sometimes when we take the elevator up or down and say, everywhere it smells beautiful perfumes. Uh, the sister doesn't know that she's not going to a party. Yeah. And perfume for women is only at home, yeah. for their maharim, for their husbands, not outside. Yeah. It's a major sin. So you must avoid that. And what about the outfit? Uh, you know, in your regular everyday clothes, this is for women, okay. what you normally wear as a hijab, except for the fact that the ihram of a woman is in her hands and face, should not cover both hands and face during the state of ihram, unless if she is a woman who is wearing a niqab, the yes. face cover, then if she happens to pass by men, as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha wa Allah narrated, she would lower what's known as isdal from top of her head, or a khimar, to cover only if she's around a non-mahram man. Sheikh, what we'll do is we're going to talk about this slightly more after the break, inshallah. Sure. Viewers, stay with us. Inshallah, after the break, we'll hear more exactly about the ihram of the women. Inshallah, see you soon. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Inshallah on the straight path we would like to discuss the niqab from an Islamic and social political perspective. So sometimes some non-Muslims they might not understand the full Islamic pictures. Anyone can say anything about it. Yes. So when can we, who speaks for Islam? Mm -hmm. This is the biggest question. <laughs> who speaks for Islam? Mm -hmm. No, they are not sinning. They are not sinning, but we are talking about now the general ruling. Mm -hmm. They are not sinning, but they are going against what has been established. It is his own ishtihad at a specific time. People would see it as a um, threat. A threat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we explain to them it's not really a threat, it's, it's actually good for the country as well. But if we don't participate, how would we ever reach to our rights? Can you clarify with us what should be the level of political participation of the Muslims in the West? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Hajj Insights. Earlier in the show, we were talking about the restrictions of Hajj. Inshallah, the Sheikh, is there any more restrictions that we have with regards to Ihram? Uh, I would just like to make a comment. Um, we do not really call it the restrictions of Hajj. Why? Okay. Because, for instance, if you perform in Hajj, right after you finish the Umrah, 
you are in a regular state yeah. where you can practice whatever was restricted during the state of ihram. Okay. And that's why in fiqh it is called mahvuratul ihram. Okay, specific to ihram. Yes. But uh, after you undo your ihram, after you finish your umrah, if you and your spouse are sharing in the same room, uh, you're free to have an intimate relationship. Okay. Uh, if you want to get married, it is permissible. And uh, wear your regular clothes, wear your perfume if you're a man, etc. There was one more restriction I wanted to address, which is clipping yes. the nails or removing any hair from the entire body. Once you are in a state of ihram, we said you prepare yourself beforehand. But once you are in a state of ihram, you do not remove any hair or nail from your body. And a very, very important mahzoor or restriction during hajj at large, but particularly during the state of ihram, and I hope that can last with us after hajj, which is quarreling and argument. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجَّ It is very interesting that argument, particularly false argument, is a sin, right? So it could be under the umbrella of the fusuq in yeah. general. But because it is very common, and some people sometimes they get stuck in, in a conversation, yeah. then in an argument, then in a fight, verbal fight, yeah. they do not feel it uh, until after it's over, then they regret. What they've I'm said. Sure, what can I do? Do I have to offer a dam? Do I have to offer a fidya or a sacrifice? I regret. So from the beginning, if I would like to advise myself, or any of my brothers and sisters who are going for hajj, what you need to do is you need to practice patience oh. and control your temper. Just think about this fact. This is the biggest world annual meeting. Yeah. Three to four million people. It's like a rainbow color. White, black, red, Russians, Americans, Chinese, Arab, uh, and non-Arab, uh, men and women, young and old, different ethnicities, different mother tongues. This is really amazing. There is no country on earth can organize such conference or meeting. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who facilitates that and makes it happen. It is by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. So if somebody steps on your shoe, take it easy. If somebody shows you a frown face, smile to him. Yeah. Uh, if somebody crossed the line, pardon him. This is a moment where you're begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and you wanted him to pardon you and forgive you and, and, and remit all your past sins. So you better do that to others. Be forgiven in order to be forgiven. So this is the most important advice from the beginning to end. فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا particularly جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ By that, we covered the mahzurat or the restrictions during the state of I want to speak to you about something called tahlul. Tahallul. Tahallul. That is the opposite of ihram. Okay. Because that comes up in a lot of the books and there's probably viewers out there that are quite interested in trying correct. to Correct. And this term will be used very often in the, in the, in the next few uh, episodes as well. So it's very important to compare the halal to ihram. Okay. We dress up in ihram and we announce the intention of talbiyah and assume the intention of ihram in order to indulge into the nusuk or perform yeah. other umrah or hajj. Okay. Once you finish the rituals of umrah or hajj, what's next? You need to exit out of this state of ihram to practice your daily activity regularly. Okay. That's called tahallul. Okay. And that will be simply done by either shortening or shaving the hair. Shaving is an option only for men. But yes, shortening yeah. is for both uh, men and women. So once we finish the umrah, yeah. we go to the barber shop, or if you have a, a clipper or a razor, or you want to do it yourself, or have somebody uh, do it for you, that is permissible. And there's a common myth that if you are in a state of ihram, you cannot give yourself a haircut at yeah. the time of tahallul, nor can another muhrim give it to you, nor can you give it to another person, which is a myth. That's not true. You say, but I'm in a state of ihram. I know. You were in a state of ihram as long as you did not finish the nusuk. Now you finished the nusuk, and now it is due to do tahallul. Similar to, it is not permissible to eat, nor to drink, etc. Well, you're... Fasting. Fasting. But at sunset, you must F eat yeah. and drink. Yeah. So whatever was haram or restricted or mahzur a few minutes ago, now it's, it's permissible. Okay? 
So a tahallul is to exit from the state of ihram okay. once you're done with the manasik of either umrah and hajj. In the case of the umrah, there is only one tahallul and simply done by shaving or trimming. If, as we discussed in the first episode, you're performing hajj or tamattu'ah, yeah. you enter Mecca, you perform your umrah in a couple of hours, and now you go to the barber, you remove your hair or shorten your hair, that's called tahallul, and now you can resume your regular life. Do everything that is permissible before uh, ihram. But if somebody is doing hajj al-Quran, he's joining the hajj to the umrah without taking a break in between, meaning without tahallul. Okay. So the restrictions or the mahdurat of ihram will last even during hajj okay. and until he finishes the rites of hajj. One very important thing I wanted to discuss before yeah. it's over, which is what? if somebody did any of the mahdurat or restrictions, either accidentally or out of ignorance, or have to do it for a reason or another. Have to do it means what? Have to do it, we say, shaving, removing any nail or hair from the body is restricted. Hmm. But sometimes it is prescribed uh, medically for some people to remove their hair, yeah. to shave, such as if they have, God forbid, lice. Yeah. And that happened during the life of the Prophet ﷺ with one of his companions. The Qur'an talks about that in verse number, uh, I believe, 196 okay. of um, Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ بِهِ أَذًا مِنْ رَأْسِهِ فَفِدْيَةٌ مِنْ صِيَامٍ أَوْ صَدَقَةٍ أَوْ نُسُكٍ Okay. We need to pay close attention to the option here. Yeah. Whoever is ill or has some harm in his head or hair has to shave, go ahead and shave. Yeah. Then you can rectify that simply by offering a fidya. The fidya, once the word fidya is mentioned in Hajj, most pilgrims, mine would go to slaughtering a yeah. sheep or one seventh of a cow yeah. or a camel. That's not necessarily true in this case. Okay. If somebody has to do any of the relations of ihram other than inner course of course yeah. or a rafath then in this case the fidya for shaving or having to wear the regular clothes having to wear the regular clothes or yeah. for shaving the fidya is sadaqa fa fidyatun min siyamin aw sadaqatin aw nusub to fast for three days or to give a sadaqa to feed six masakin yeah. or to slaughter a sheep. Okay. There is a choice. It is better, of course, to feed the poor by slaughtering a sheep and so on because it's more beneficial for uh, the poor and the masakin. But the person has the choice to choose. Exactly. Okay? So this is a fidya. But what if somebody did whatever was restricted out of ignorance or out of forgetfulness? Somebody totally forgot that he is in a state of ihram and he started trimming his mustache, or shaving, or whatever. He did not know, hmm. or wore a kufi, or a pair of socks. Uh, many times in Arafah, you see people wearing uh, their underclothes, or their socks in a kufi. What is this? They don't know. They think it is okay, and it goes along with the, yeah. with the uniform. No. So simply by saying, no, this is restricted, he's informed by removing this and fixing this, yeah. there is no blame on them, and they do not have to offer any fidya. Okay. The fidya is only on those who have to do whatever I mentioned earlier uh, for a reason or another, a valid excuse such as, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ بِهِ أَذَمْ مَنْ رأسه. So just to summarize that point, so if someone does something breaks a restriction of ihram of ignorance and at that point you're saying you're, he's told about socks let's say for example he takes the socks off and that's it and that's it yes mashallah and uh, the ransom which i mentioned in the yeah. verse of surah al-baqarah is pertaining sickness ailment or having to shave the hair okay. but there are some restrictions if the hajj violated them it would ruin the hajj okay such as al jima' an intercourse coming to a complete a sexual uh, relation with one spouse during the state of ihram. Okay. This is the biggest violation. Number one, hajj is ruined. Number two, there is a big ransom. It's not about a sheep, it's about a camel for each. 
Number two, they must come back next year or whenever the earliest opportunity to make up that Hajj which they missed or violated, even if it was a nafl or a voluntary okay. Hajj, not just the mandatory. Jazakallah hajj. khair, uh, Ustaz and our teacher for your information. Inshallah viewers, stay with us in our next episode. We will learn even more about this great part of our Islam, Hajj. Jazakallah khair, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mountains of Mecca, what can you tell Of the day that stones from the sky fell Destroying an army determined to break The house of Allah that Abraham built Oh, mountains of Mecca, how was the dawn On the day that my prophet Muhammad was born How did it feel knowing he was to be the last and most beloved of all Rasul of Allah Nabi